very good evening to each one of you. Uh, before we could start, uh, we'll have the uh, Nade Gita played. Uh, Thank you all for the patriotic song of the state of Karnataka doing the honors. Uh, 
before we could uh, start our session, uh, I will request a minute of a silence uh, from the BCICB like to offer tribute to all those who have lost their lives due to COVID and pray for their soul to rest in peace. And also we like to express our gratitude to all the frontline COVID-19 warriors for their invaluable service that they have been rendering to us. A minute of a silence. for that one and, and also uh, this is uh, what I think uh, it is still it has not commercialized. Uh, thank you all for your kind support. Uh, let's start with this session. Uh, on behalf of the Bangalore Chamber of Industry and Commerce, we welcome each one of you to this special talk on new industry policy 2020-2025. This session has been organized under the aegis of the Ease of Doing Business, Manufacturing and MSME Council Expert Committee of BCIC. We would like to thank the leaders of this committee uh, led by Mr. none other than Mr. M. N. Vidya Shankar, the, the retired IS officer. And then we have uh, Mr. A.B. Srinivasan uh, from the uh, Ease of Doing Business Committee, and then we have from the Manufacturing, Mr. Prakash Ji, and then we have uh, Mr. Dr. Devarajan, and also from the MSME Council, we have Mr. B.R. Indushikar, uh, Chairman and Co-Chairman by Dr. Jacob Krasta, uh, to curate this session for the benefit of our members. Uh, today's session will be addressed by uh, Ma'am Gunjan Krishna, IAS, Commissioner for Industrial Development and Director for Business, Industry and Commerce, Government of Karnataka. And we hope that uh, she, she will be addressing on the topics uh, of the uh, Karnataka new industry policy, the special investment regions, the investment promotion subsidy, subsidies for MSME and investment appeal of the Karnataka. We'll, we'll definitely hear a lot from ma'am uh, this evening. Uh, the session will be moderated by Mr. A.V. Srinivasan, the co-chair of the Ease of Doing Business Expert Committee of BCIC. On behalf of the Chamber and the office bearers of BCIC, we express our sincere thanks to uh, Ma'am Gunjan for accepting our invitation to address on this important subject. We also like to thank all the participants for joining in today's session. We request all the participants to kindly mute your mic and webcam option. To, this will enhance and keep the bandwidth strong as well as avoid any disturbance in the background. Please post your questions in the chat box only. Uh, the speaker will respond to the question during the session and also request you to kindly raise your hand in case you like to post a question. May I now invite our president, Mr. T.R. Parshira, to do the welcome address and take this session forward. Sir, over to you, President, sir. Uh, thanks, Prithvi. A very good evening to all. On behalf of uh, BCIC Extend, a very, very hearty welcome to uh, the Commissioner for Industries and Commerce, uh, Mrs. Gunjan Krishnaji. Uh, thank you very much for accepting our invitation and uh, addressing the members today. Uh, Madam uh, BCIC, as you know, uh, we are one of the leading chambers in the state of Karnataka with 850 plus uh, members. Uh, we have uh, played a very crucial role in the COVID time uh, with a big support from your office for supporting our industries on timely communication, timely support. In fact, unprecedented uh, COVID has hit us in a very big way. But uh, thanks to the resilience of our members and the big support we enjoyed from the government, we have been able to overcome the situation together as a team. In fact, from BCIC, we extended also a lot of support to our member companies in sharing of best practices. We also uh, did our best to support the government in uh, carrying the messages of the members and also in the form of a CSR recently we donated an oxygen generator to the COVID center in Jigani then uh, we have donated uh, 10 concentrators to the multi-speciality hospital also to the BBMP we have donated uh, three mobile crematoriums and also five uh, mortuary freezers to support and uh, we have been conducting awareness sessions 
from time to time to our members. Recently, we had uh, Dr. Sudarshan addressing our members. We also had uh, the pulmonologist, uh, Mr. Ravi, addressing our members and Dr. Suresh. Uh, so uh, we are able to uh, do a lot of good things. However, the challenges have been too many, madam. And uh, apart from Bangalore, uh, uh, under the direction of the Honorable Industry Minister, we are also looking at opening the office in Mysore and Darwa. So the 15th of this uh, July, uh, we are having the uh, kickoff function at Bangalore. Uh, we would be sending the invitation to you and your office. Uh, this uh, will be opening the two centers, one in Mysore and Darwa. And uh, Dr. Virendra Egdeji uh, is uh, coming and attending this. We are opening the offices in the Dharmasthala Institute of Management in Mysore and Darwa. And uh, we also will have the Honorable Minister. And uh, with your August presence, you would look forward to take this uh, proposal. We are also actively discussing with the government of Japan, basically with uh, JETRO and uh, other agencies, to open our office in Tokyo. So we are in the advanced stages. Our uh, theme this year is Namma Karnataka, the gateway to the future India. And Tumkur Park is coming in a big way. So we thought that uh, Bangalore Chambers can play a very significant role in bridging the uh, government and the industries through our uh, good networking of uh, corporate leaders in many big companies. Yep. So through our experiential learning, we would like to support the government in accelerating the investments. Therefore, we are lo looking at opening this office in uh, Tokyo. And we are also looking at collaborating with a lot of other international chambers. Already, we are in advanced stages of discussion with the Chamber of Mauritius on the Indian business community and also the Israel chambers. And we are also looking at Thailand, Australia, and UK, so that uh, we can have a lot of synergy of these uh, countries, and we can bring back the value to our member community. Madam, we would like to congratulate uh, the bold uh, new industrial policy under your leadership uh, we could launch. And I think it is a very big uh, success for the government and also for the industries. Unprecedented policy, bold changes have been made, First time, I think the incentive is based on the turnover, which is very simple and easy to administer. And also the uh, motivation to go out of Bangalore by grading uh, zone one, zone two, zone three, and zone three is in Bangalore. Therefore, there is a huge uh, motivation to move away from Bangalore. Today, Karnataka is 90% by Bangalore. So that kind of a mindset, I think we can break through. And also the ABC uh, kind of clearance, which is a breakthrough move, the affidavit-based clearance to set up industries in less than three months' time. So we are very happy on this kind of great initiatives and also the focus on technology, the IoT, the Internet of Things, the digital transformation, the big data. I think there is a lot of impetus on all these new technologies and this new industrial policy. Also, the zero discharge is given a focus and companies are encouraged to reduce the pollution. So we appreciate all the salient features of the new industrial policy, madam. Uh, so we would like to uh, continue our work together with the government of Karnataka. And uh, we sincerely thank you and your team for the relentless work you have rendered in the times of uh, COVID. In fact, I know the kind of uh, hard times you had, uh, you know, trying to get so many frantic calls in the industry, and uh, myself and a lot of other leaders. But I think you have been always supportive. And uh, through the big support, we were able to slowly unlock the industries Though the challenges are there in terms of getting the people, building up the skill, but uh, nevertheless, we will bounce back as soon as possible. And we assure you that uh, we will work hand in hand with you. And we are also thankful to your office. Already uh, we are working uh, with your office on the ease of doing business. So we had uh, two rounds of meeting with uh, Shini. And our team is very active and we are given a lot of inputs. Mr. Vidya Shankar, Mr. AVS. And Mr. Hindu, we all work together and we have given a lot of uh, good points and we had a good interaction with uh, in the, uh, Shini and uh, we appreciate you on this kind of uh, new initiative. And I assure you that the BCIC will be always with you and we look forward to working with you in all your future endeavors. I also recognize uh, the presence of senior leaders today, Mr. Vidya Shankar, Mr. Jairaj, the former Energy Secretary and other uh, senior people for this uh, very important session. So I don't want to take much of your time. So uh, with this, uh, I request AVS to set the tone in a couple of minutes. Then uh, we will invite uh, our chief guest, the Commissioner for Industries, to address the gathering. Over to you, Chin.
Thank you very much, President. Uh, good evening to all present here. Uh, we have with us Madam Kunjan Krishna, IAS Commissioner of Commissioner for Industrial Development and Industri Director Industries and Commerce, Government of Karnataka. Uh, the new industrial policy does not really need any uh, setting or explanation, but nevertheless, uh, I would like to uh, make a few points here. Uh, on behalf of BCAC, ma'am, first of all, we would like to congratulate once again, uh, Madam Commissioner and uh, Government of Karnataka for coming out with this new in Karnataka Industrial Policy 2020-2025. Madam, I'm happy to inform you that BCAC is very closely working with uh, Mr. Srinivas Sivakumar of Microsoft in addressing the redundancies and, uh, and to improve the ease of doing business in Karnataka. In BCAC, a ease of doing business committee has been formed exclusively this year to promote investments into Karnataka. This is something which is extremely important. This is one of the only chamber which has got this committee, and it also says Namma Karnataka, the gateway to India. Uh, we have time to time made representation to the Honorable uh, Minister for Heavy Industries, uh, Department of uh, Industries and Commerce, and various other departments to promote ease of doing business rankings of Karnataka. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am, once again, for taking time today to be with us to deliver the special talk. Uh, to the audience, uh, uh, just I want to say a few points. Uh, the special talk is extremely apt uh, and uh, very nicely organized under the ages of three expert committees, Ease of Doing Business Committee, Manufacturing Committee, and MSME Expert Committee. Uh, the industrial policy is subsequent to the Karnataka Industrial Policy 2014-2019. It is an elaborate framework running into 126 pages, set with an objective of attracting investments worth rupees 5 lakh crores, and to create employment opportunities for 20 lakh people. It is indeed a detailed document with clear focus of making Karnataka the powerhouse of India in the days to come. The new industrial policy talks about promotion of MSME, Industry 4.0, special investment zones, regions, investment promotion subsidies, labor reforms, etc., etc. It also talks about e Udyami being upgraded to a new integrated digital single window system. The new Karnataka Industrial Policy is an extremely relevant and important document for all of us. Uh, I thank once again for uh, uh, thanks, thank uh, Madam once again for agreeing to come and deliver this special talk. Without wasting much time, I hand over the proceedings to the Chair of MSME and my colleague uh, Indu Shegar uh, to take it forward. Indu, over to you. Uh, you can set. Uh, you can uh, request Ma'am to join us for this speech. Ma'am, good evening and a very hearty welcome to this uh, very important session organized by the three panels. And uh, I would say uh, we are really looking forward hearing from you in, in also the various initiatives apart from the policy too. So I won't I won't take much of your time. So we would uh, if Prakash wants to go ahead and make a, a reflection and then over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much for joining this evening. So that's it, sir. I think we will follow madam uh, to take it forward. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, namaskara, good evening. It's a pleasure to be here uh, amongst you today. BCIC has been doing a lot of good work. In fact, I've been seeing such activism in uh, BCIC. It's very heartening to see. So congratulations to all the office bearers and all the members. Uh, Mr. Vidya Shankar and Mr. Jairat, my colleagues from the uh, from the IS. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure to, uh, to see you here uh, at this forum. Um, we all are in very difficult times and very trying times. In fact, these kind of uh, pandemic happens once in a century and we are in those times and this is not just you know taking a toll physically psychologically but economics every aspect cycle every aspect is actually tested in this in these trying times and our endeavor in the government and outside is basically to form community because only communities can withstand you know such an onslaught that what we are seeing today and my full uh, credit goes to the industry department, not on, sorry, the industry that we have 
uh, all of you because uh, despite lockdown i know you know you've been facing such uh, hardships with the lockdowns and there and being in the industry department we to totally understand your pain but the numbers went skyrocketing this time and there was no choice but to have these lockdowns and we what our endeavor throughout this uh, process has been that as minimum you know uh, problems that may be there and discomfort that may be there for the industries but having said that we are always your champions industries department both the acs and i we work towards and we keep on telling the chief secretary also that we need to have all our industry open and sometimes we you know you says we get tired of industry department also <laughs> we hear that but we are your champions and i do understand but i'm sure you know the uh, industry will again bounce back the way it did from the last lockdown so i'm very um uh, i'm full of uh, you know hope when it comes to this and i'm sure uh, so talking about the industrial policy for which i also want to congratulate bacic that looking at you know expanding in other parts of bangalore so other parts of karnataka and also going in for uh, collaboration with the outside chambers of commerce so this is something very um, very welcoming and uh, also i would like to say that uh, again you talked about that you have one of its kind where you are getting you know collaborating with outside cham chambers to get more investment into karnataka so i really uh, appreciate that and i'm very thankful to you now coming to the 2020 2025 industrial policy when we started with the policy there was no pandemic so we were looking at you know how uh, karnataka and uh, bangalore is already on the world map when it comes to the uh, global value chain supply chain if you look at it and we see bangalore if you see in any rankings of the world be it in technology we are there be it we are the largest growing te mature technology hub in the world and that is not a study done by indian agency that is a study done by a uh, mayor of uh, london in which we stood first in the london came second and silicon valley it was third similarly if you look at aerospace and defense we are uh, bangalore is the only city in india which features there at that too in the at the number 3 position after singapore and dubai so uh, and ahead of even paris in the number of investments that we are getting in into the aerospace and defense machine tool we all know that we are number one in machine tool when it comes to uh, similarly for biotechnology 33% of the biotechnology happens from canada the exports happen 66% of the companies are here research and development if we talk about then 40% of the research and development of india and 35% of the global capability centers or the global in house centers are located in karnataka uh startup as you all are aware of we are the startup capital we have given the maximum number of unicorns to india um and 6 uh, 38% of the fundings of the startup also we command so we have, we are one of the largest ecosystem when it comes to start so what i am talking about is that karnataka combines together something which is very unique and that unique thing we wanted to address and build on those building blocks in this new policy that was the idea uh, at the time when we started because i remember tim cook uh, i was listening to one of his speech and he was talking about how china is a very compelling story why is it a very compelling story that because it very beautifully brings together the workmanship the kind of skill set that is required highly qualified highly skilled highly productive workers along with the new age technology robotics quantum computing ai all of that they very beautifully bring it together and that is something very unique to karnataka and bangalore in particular so we wanted to build so we are uniquely pos positioned when it comes to uh, the country apart from you know living index uh, the most dynamic city all of those things accolades we already have so with this background i will just bring before you the um, the new industrial policy that we have come out with can you see my screen yes ma'am uh, yes ma'am yes yeah. okay 
So uh, the idea again is to emerge as a global leader in advanced manufacturing, research development and innovation and to create an ecosystem for an inclusive balance and social development of the state. So this is the vision with which we started working. And these are some of the objectives, you know, attract investment, ensure employment. Last industrial policy, incidentally, we could achieve the target that we had set when it comes to the employment. Um, maintain an industrial growth rate of 10% per annum and provide an enabling eco ecosystem for technology up adoption because we do realize that ultimately growth of any society happens because of the innovation and the newer technologies that are adopted by both MSME and the big and large companies. Now focus sectors, what we are looking at essentially is industry 4.0 because this is the area we should look at both are balanced wherein we should look at, at areas which provides large scale of large scale employment. We should also look at industry 4.0 because this is the need of the hour and wherein how we can increase the productivity. See all throughout the industrial revolutions that we have seen the second generation and the third generation is essentially the jump in productivity that causes these revolution and Industry 4.0 is one such that can create a jump in the uh, productivity. Intellectual property rights because we want uh, already uh, Karnataka is a hub for research and development and we want to build on that. So this is the IPR that is development initiative sustainability very important. Now if you talk to the World Bank, they will tell you that this is the only policy which has come out in recent time that talks about ESGs. It talks about sustainability environment. It talks about you know how we can use uh, uh, water, uh, reuse of industrial water, how we can ensure that there is a water security for industries. So this is something uh, apart from that, talking about ZLD, which are some of the things that have come from the meetings that have had with BCIC also. So we have put all of that together. Technology of adoption and research and development. Again, you know, last time when we had, we had four zones and these different zones become a lot of, you know, problems. So what we had done is like try to simplify it. We have divided the state into three zones where zone one is essentially your entire Hyderabad, Karnataka region, uh, Bagalkot, Belgavi, Vijayapura. So Northern Karnataka, Dharwad, uh, Gadak, Haveri, Uttar Kannada, Chamrajnagar, Koduku. Now zone two is all other district other than zone one and three. Zone three is your Bengaluru urban district and the rural district. Now what happens is if you look at Karnataka, we say that Karnataka is a totally policy driven state, whether the government changes, but the policy continuum stays. And that is what is unique about Karnataka. And that is why we are a preferred destination for the investors. Uh, we have dedicated policies, say for example, in electric vehicle, we have come out with a new EV policy. Uh, 2017, we had come out and now we have updated it, seeing you know what other states have been doing. We have IT policy, we have biotechnology policy, we have these dedicated policies. And so the sectors which are covered by those policies is not something that industrial policy is going to look after. Essentially, those sectors which are not covered by these domain you know, policies are the ones which are looked after in this um, industrial policy. So essentially your automobiles and auto components, pharmaceutical and medical devices, engineering and machine tools, knowledge based industries, renewable energy, healthcare and wellness, logistics, sugar, education and biofuels. So we do recognize, you know, cement. If you look at it, one of the largest steel factories is located here. So jindal, so cement, steel, and, and we have large number of cement factories also here, as you're aware. Sector specific policies, we are uh, now going to come out with the aerospace and defense policy, which we are updating again. We have the policy which came out 10 years back and electric vehicles have already spoken that we have updated. And now I would urge you to look at it and would like you to invest in that. That's Now, talking about uh, uh, MSME, so MSME we all know is a backbone of each and every economy and uh, uh, we have a large thriving MSME sector in the in Karnataka and the idea is to strengthen them further. 
So what we have tried to do is there is a general category and the special category and this special category we have included women because women generally were getting a very few incentives, not much. So what we have done is 5% over and above what we are giving to general category are given to SC, ST women, minorities, physically challenged and ex-servicemen, entrepreneurs. So it has been simplified in instead of having various different categories. Uh, what we are trying to do for micro enterprises like different zones, they will get 30% of the value of fixed asset and maximum is rupees 25 lakhs, 20 lakhs. Similarly, for small enterprise, 25%. So if you are micro, you are getting more of as a percentage of your VFA compared to the small enterprises. Um, and subsidy can be availed to an extent. So it does not like you need not take 10% uh, of the turnover in each financial year. So you can start taking as soon as you start producing, you can start taking it. So that is something that we have brought about earlier. And the most important part is in the turnover based subsidy is that it is very simple. Earlier we used to give taxation based subsidies. Now in the taxation based subsidies, if you look at uh, GST with the coming of the GST, Essentially, the incentive is on the consumptions. So if the if you if the consumption is more within the state, then you will get more uh, incentive. You will get more subsidy from us. But that is not the case because many of us are producing for the entire country and we are also producing for the entire world. So in that play case, you lose out. Whereas in turnover based subsidy, you get that benefit also. There are various sectors which are having a various GST rates. So if somebody say, for example, electric vehicle for the, the GST is reduced. That means your uh, benefits that we can give under the policy will get reduced. So instead of doing that, we have tried to do is to link it up with the uh, invest uh, with the turnover. So this is and this entire thing we can take from your GST returns that you are your forms nine. From there, we can just take the data. And the another important aspect that I would like to tell you is that this is not just applicable to the your production, which is used for domestic consumption. It is also applicable to export. So this is something very different that we have done in this industrial policy. Now for the medium manufacturing, what we are doing in all the zones, we are giving 2.5% uh, as a turnover uh, subsidy for the maximum period of six, five, depending on which zone that you are in. Now, other than that, they would be exemption from stamp duty, concessional registration charges, land conversion fee reimbursement, exemption from tax on electricity tariff. That is there for the MSME that we are giving um, uh, for the different like zone one, 100% for eight years, um, seven years and four years, depending upon where you are. Power subsidy is only for zone one and two. Reimbursement of cost of power paid at rupees one per unit consumed for a period of three years. So this is being provided to MSME. And there are certain supports that we support to artisans, interest subsidy on technology upgradation because we really want our MSMEs. One of the things that we have seen is that there is many dwarf MSMEs. Now, what do we mean by dwarf MSMEs? MSMEs which initially show promise, but then they don't grow um, in a trajectory, you know, on an upward trajectory. They remain, you know, a little stunted in their growth. And the reason for that are that they were at the right time, they're not able to scale up. And that scaling up, uh, not, uh, inability to scale up is because of many reasons. And one of the reasons is, you know, uh, technology upgradation. So we have uh, uh, ensured that you know interest subsidy or technology uh, upgradation loan that we are providing. We are also 25% uh, of the cost or 50,000 for adopting technology. So these are some of the recognized laboratories. If you are taking that, we will give you this also. And we are also promoting technology business incubation center. So if you want to set up 25% uh, of the cost of incubation sector, center maximum of rupees 50 lakh minimum one we are uh, you know envisaging that if we can have one technology business incubation sector in each zone especially in zone one uh, so this is something uh, similarly for quality certification because this is again a limitation where people find that our uh, production that we are doing in uh, micro small smes is something that 
matches the quality that are produces by uh, produced by the bigger organization so certification becomes a very important aspect in that so iso series certification 75% of the cost maximum of 75000 is given and i talked about esg part the rainwater harvesting we are giving 50% cost of equipment wastewater recycling again is incentivized and zero discharge 50% of the cost of equipment is a maximum of 7.5 lakhs. Recycling, again, we are giving for electronic waste and plastic waste. Subsidy for setting up of effluent treatment plants that we give 50% of the ETP or 50 lakh. And for the special category, all of this will be increased. So 75% of the cost. So I'm just reading general, but there, this is, uh, I think we have shared the policy with all of you and reimbursement of expenses incurred for water audit. So these are some of the things that we are trying to do because industry per se, if you just, we cannot see industry in isolation, manufacturing in isolation. They have to adopt best practices. We have to look at how, what is the impact on the environment and how we can minimize the impact uh, on the environment by using the best technologies. Now for the large mega, ultra mega and super mega um, enterprises, um, continuing on the same strand, uh, turnover-based uh, incentive that we're going to provide here, apart from that exemption on stamp duty, zone 100%, zone 2, 75%, and then um, concessional registration charges, which are then reimbursement of land conversion fee that we have providing. Uh, apart from that, subsidy for effluent treatment plant, where up to 2.5 crores that you can get, and the CETP also, where we are looking at five crore limit. Um, also, what we have done is that earlier policy has got this anchor industry. So anchor industry was something that is in a in a taluka, which hitherto had not got any major industries. So somebody who's investing 100 crore and providing a direct employment of 75 persons would be eligible for this anchor subsidy. This is uh, some uh, investment subsidy which will be giving 10 crore in zone 1 and 7 crore in zone 2. Now, this is the turnover based subsidy that we are looking at is uh, up to 2.25%. This will be provided 45 to 40% of the value of your fixed asset. Um, now, this will be what we have done is it will be based on the num your investment size and also on the employment because we want to encourage considering that the, within our purview we want more and more people of Karnataka to get employment so it will be in, based on this two up to 2.25 will be based on your investment size and the employment that you are providing so these are different you know for mega it is two percent for ultra mega because it goes down because the investments goes high but the value of fixed asset is like 50 percent 45 percent for ultra mega, it is 1.85% and super mega enterprises, it is 1.75. Now super mega is 1000, ultra mega is 500 crores and mega enterprises 250 crore. In fact, we can change these definitions also. Now, the other important aspect that we are trying to do is that how MSME, this is not a part there, but we are working on a platform which is called Sarthak and I will take your support also in that. We have been hearing ever since I worked as an uh, MSME commissioner also and before, you know, uh, where governments at a various level and I'm sure my um, seniors who are here, we've been hearing of the same problems and I'm sure the problems uh, remain the same. The questions are there, but how do we address them is the issue and these questions have already always been how to get the funding how to give them access to supply chain, how to give uh, MSME access to the market, how we can ensure that, you know, they get uh, technology that they require, how we can get them skill training. So all of these questions are there. So for that, we are working closely. We've been in touch with a number of uh, uh, Gates Foundation and others as well to build a platform. And the idea of this platform is that we take, there is some, Basic problems, basic issue. Basic issue is information asymmetry. They do not know. Suppose I have to start a food processing 
simple food processing micro enterprise wants to do it they don't know they don't have access to all the regulations that are there so if we can get all the regulations in place at the first go second is can we not get them access to all the technology technology can be two part one is the technology of production the other is if i can get all the cftri and all of them at one place then it becomes easier to know what is the um, current technologies that are available and second is technology that is required to increase the productivity so crm and all of these solutions are generally taken by the large industries but the micro small industries find it very difficult so those professional services now you, you see khata.com how it became so so very successful because it was catering to the actual need of the very micro and uh, entrepreneurs similarly can we not provide them professional services say a ca service the legal services but they cannot hire a ca for a long time they also find it very difficult to take them on retainership so what we are trying to work out that can we not give these services on call by having these people on our platform so similarly for raw material access for supply chain for market we have tied up with amazons to flipkarts to all the other platforms and we would want all the msmes to get these access so this is something that we are working in i would really invite bcic to work with us to make it a success now the other issue that we've been having and you've been kind to us by saying good things about us but we also know there are number of problems that beset industries especially in karnataka if we talk about we need to really upgrade our industrial parks we need to have world class industrial parks if you are talking about about becoming the uh, part of the global supply chain then we have to meet up with those standards and what we feel is that we are lacking these truly international standard private and uh, industrial parks and here is the opportunity that i am inviting all of you to become a part of uh, setting up these industrial park and there are certain incentives and concessions that we have built in and this is for, again for the first time that has been done in the industrial policy so what we are trying to do hither to what happened any developer would not get a stamp duty exemption now what we have done is we have given you exemption from stamp duty so if you have your own land you can bring it together if you want kidb to get you land through suc that can be worked out if you feel that you know there is certain um, there is certain area that you we are acquiring and you together can set up a private industrial park then we can also have an spv we can work out these things so concessional registration charge we are giving you subsidy for setting up of uh, ctp and stp and very important that we are giving an investment promotion subsidy of 5% of eligible fixed capital investment on building and infrastructure facilities in all zones so this is something that has been provided and additional incentives are there for to micro and small like build to suit if you make within industrial park over and above the standard package of incentives and concessions for msme these are like land subsidy special land subsidy to msme in uh, private industrial areas can be provided uh, platted factories at the rate of 25% of the guidance value limiting to the maximum extent of 1 acre in zone 1 and 2 only water charges subsidy on water charges for msme that we have provided and ctp charges also to enable continuous usage of ctp a subsidy on user charges of ctp at the rate of rupees 15 per unit of effluent discharge is also been provided for now there are certain other additional packages of incentives and concessions uh, which are i will not dwell much on those um, the, but one thing that is most asked you know what are we doing for the export and what uh, what is it done so one the biggest tic ticket item here is that within our turnover based subsidy exports are included so that is a big thing second is electricity tax exemption 100% electricity tax exemption for new msme export units so that is for an initial period of 5 years in zone 3 performance subsidy msme units who double their exports in subsequent years will be paid 1% of fob value to the tune of 10 lakhs per unit in all zones 
bank charges. We are going to reimburse uh, of bank charges on production of EBRC for all export, exports from MSME sectors in all zones. And ECGC charges, we will be reimbursing those also. Certification charges, again, this is in a scheme of things that we are looking at. You know, there is a certification is very, very important when it comes to the exporting. So refund of certification charges incurred for obtaining statutory certificates like CE, FD, FDA, China compulsory certificates, GMP. All of these are very, very important. And this is something that we have taken account of in the policy. Fee for acquiring certification again, you know, certification charges and the fee that is so we can refund the fees also. For pharmaceutical industries, um, we've been seeing that um, um, common testing, laboratory, cold storage, warehousing. So this is something for the pharma park that we are trying to give one time capital subsidy of up to 50% of the total cost subject to the ceiling of 5 crore and, and clinical trials. Again, very important because Karnataka has developed into a major hub for these. So an annual incentives of up to 20% of expenditure towards clinical trials for bioavailability and bioequivalent subject to a maximum of one crore. And uh, we are also looking at establishment of medical devices park. One um, land has been identified in um, in Mysuru. So we'll be working on that also. And there are certain um, incentives that have been provided here. Apart from that, there are all general subsidies based on research and development because research we do understand is key to the what we have been following in Karnataka is that innovation now growth forever. So the engine of uh, um, innovation only keeps growth going. Uh, so capital subsidy we are providing for R&D and apart from that government of uh, ITBT department has also come out with a dedicated R&D policy. I will urge all of you to have a look at that and take advantage of that. Uh, similarly, we are working with CII and we'll be very happy to work with BCIC also and other. We are bringing in all, so Bosch, Siemens, all of them we are trying to bring on one platform to create Industry 4.0. Now, this is not, it's going to be a virtual platform. We do not re require a brick and mortar platforms here, like buildings here. Uh, we have CMTI and other organizations that can provide trainings we already have you know various uh, labs where you can see you know how um, uh, manufacturing 4.0 can really play out so your sensors how you can ensure that your existing machinery can be retrofit fitted and how they can be made compatible with the uh, uh, industry 4.0 so all of these with the best practices with your question and answer with the trainings and all of this we are trying to work out uh, on this platform that we are creating. Similarly, there is a capital subsidy for supporting direct digital manufacturing. So capital subsidy of 50% limited to 5 crore uh, per center for the first five units in the state with the help of industry association. This I would really want you to take a lead in. Uh, again, intellectual property rights, we do understand. So we are providing financial assistance to establish IP cells and technologies transfer centers. We are also helping you assistance to establish IP promotion and facilitation hubs and centers of fi filing a patent and invention and geographical indicators. So all of this is given in the uh, again for the healthcare industry. This came before the pandemic. I think we could have thought much more had we known that we're going to be hit by a pandemic, but nobody could have predicted that. So encouragement for waste management practices is something that we have put some one time capital subsidy up to 50% of the cost of the biomedical waste management system for all zones subject to a ceiling of 2.5 crore for LMI industries and 50 lakhs for MSMEs. So this is in nutshell what we've been uh, working in uh, uh, in the industrial policy, there's lots other, but instead of boring you with the details which you already have the policy in place, I would rather prefer to take your questions, your comments and remarks. And uh, so that is from me. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, ma'am. I will just stop sharing. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, very, very interesting insight.
in fact some of the questions uh, that have come in the chat box i'm just able to see uh, one question that's coming is uh, is there uh, any kind of incentive for uh, zone 1 to uh, of course uh, there is a encouragement to move away from bangalore but uh, for obvious reasons there is also an attraction for bangalore is there any kind of incentive that you're contemplating for uh, zone 1 is one question coming and second question that has come is uh, plug and play parks something like mp and up are you looking at uh, increasing the plug and play parks and what is your vision for this and one more question that has come is uh, wave 2 we are just coming out and if wave 3 happens for god's sake it should not but we prepare and uh, can we ensure that industries uh, can be exempted and uh, we'll always follow the complete uh, protocols and uh, covid appropriate behavior and vaccination also would have been completed can you please help us uh, industries are uh, you know delinked from wave 3 with a strict discipline i think these three questions coming up quickly in the chat box you can yeah. just uh... so um actually we propose and finance department dispose <laughs> so we had uh, proposed for uh, incentives in zone 1 also to be very frank with you now it's up to your uh, now it has been approved by the cabinet also in fact um, when i had an initial discussion with the with the isn prasad saab he had agreed and then all of a sudden we saw that it was not there and it so i totally you know resonate uh, your echo your sentiment here but then uh, this is the case right now but for many other policies which are dedicated policies you do get it in, even in uh, say for example ev and other places you will mostly get around and many of you are not just exactly if you are in ramnagar you are getting you are in zone 2 so under Or special category are, probably still is uh, in bangalore city and rural urban and rural that is something that is they are excluded maybe that comes under the special policy maybe on a case to case basis like the so earlier policy there is a compelling case of investment we can look at it like in estm what we are trying to do now is that we are identifying a cluster and that cluster we are trying to do in harluru uh, where uh, aerospace and defense uh, part 2 the phase 2 that we are bringing out there we are bringing out an aerospace and defense park also a estm park so in those areas um all the policies will apply remember one more question that has come up in the chat box yeah the second you are said plug and play so yeah. for plug and play definitely which is why i talked about private industrial park and the slew of incentives that we have included in the industrial policy but having said that we have mandated even the kidb to create in every industrial park uh, plug and play facilities third you talked about you know if wave 3 happens god forbid uh then in that case uh, i totally agree with you if all your uh, workers are uh, vaccinated then there is no reason why we should not maybe we can reduce the number of people or maybe the shifts and the way you know the social distancing and all but i'm all for that and we will push that case thank you ma'am ma'am one more question that's coming up is see if you look at kdb land and non kdb land mm-hmm. the building ratios are different and uh, the whatever you are talking about uh, 65% in case of uh, kdb and non kdb it is 40% something like that so the request is to standardize this across karnataka so that there is no reason uh, why we, there should be a difference i think from bcic also we made a representation as a part of ease of doing business under uh, mr vidya shankar so this you can consider there are two uh, standards now for kdb land and panchayat land for the building ratio no but then uh, the what you saying the total build up area is like if you are located within the kidb area the uh, then uh, earlier see 33% is something that has to be kept for the green part yeah. but what we have done in the kidb area, we keep it already so you get more to build it and that has been corrected in fact we had gone up to the government of india level to bring this connect and that happened on your japanese dialogue uh, that we been doing yeah. so we i will share with you and you can come back uh, that uh, changes have been made yeah 
so this standardization is going to bring about so the common standard it will be great so that it simplifies the administration and the one more thing is ma'am i think thank you so much for your big support for the cfe fees i think many companies were shaken after the covid and the cfo fees was increased 100 times and 200 times i think thanks to your timely support and the intervention intervention yeah, we could uh, really get some relief but still the order has not come ma'am in fact so uh, we have sent it to them um, almost 20 30 days back we had a round of meeting under the chairmanship of uh, um, minister our minister and uh, forest uh, minister also we had those uh, and then we have sent our what we feel should be so we have sent it and in most likelihood it will be adopted very soon yes uh, so that uh, that would really bring a good relief and you know the companies can be yeah. very clear about it yeah yeah that is done it's just a matter of time that they will come out with it right ma'am and yeah. another thing that came in our discussions recently ma'am i think the real uh, single window purpose like yes. uh, when we in fact uh, we had a session with uh, mrs gauri kumar last week mm -hmm. the former uh, labor secretary in the government of india and she was mm -hmm. also very actively involved in gujarat government mm -hmm. in of doing business so one of the things that came ma'am in fact we want to bring it to you you are out to really implement the single window of course we are really appreciate that mr shini is doing a great job under your guidance now uh, the single window in real true sense once the company is filed an application i think there should not be any further follow up with you know bescom or with kdb or with pollution control board uh, or with the inspectorate of factories so all these things should go seamlessly and uh, the company should have only one kind of uh, window to follow up i think uh, this has also been the kind of a big request from a lot of foreign uh, Yeah, companies that are coming uh, to president can i can i just uh, but yeah, yeah, for a yes, minute yes, actually yes 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 uh, right. ma'am uh, this is ab strenuwasan here uh, co chair of uh, ease of doing business here in the last one year we have had many interaction within our committee within bcic there is one particular point which keeps coming up is standardized application form across different places for example in a single window system if we give all the details to karnataka udyog mitra would it not be possible to uh, uh, give that data to different departments so that the uh, applicants may not have to go to different different departments to give the application once again so this is something which keeps coming up ma'am and uh, from our discussions with uh, srinivas shivakumar we understand that uh, you are trying to address this in the integrated digital single window system uh, but our question to you is um, how close you are to achieving that and uh, this seem to be very very important for even zone 2 uh, zone 1 zone 2 people also to get the information and uh, they said the grievance addressal in up and other states are also much better than what we are doing ma'am so any particular time deadline and how feasible this is can you just throw some light on that so i'm the biggest critic of our own single window honestly and ever since uh, we've been trying we were uh, give, we had a very bad vendor in the beginning and uh, for it was like every year you have this you know you keep on running on a treadmill we have these government of india ranking and these rankings is not letting you do actually something new because you are continuously working on uh, so what happened is we were not able to get him out or get some somebody in so that is the dilemma that we faced uh, in the beginning now what we have done is i had got microsoft in place and we have designed the entire thing so it is not that uh, we do not know these problems these problems we been working so now the entire blueprint of the single window has been designed and we are giving the entire platform creation also to microsoft to develop so development it is the ball is not in the in my court the ball is in their court microsoft had to come uh, come back to me and i'm waiting for the past 3 months for them to come back to me with the commercials which they are like you know worse than bureaucracy take uh, ages to come back with so uh, because uh, mr prasad isn prasad saab agreed that he will give them exemption because they have done wonderful work when it comes to you know the whole envisioning and the entire thing so we are ready with the blueprint single sign in i understand you put in your information anywhere we will have more of analytics artificial intelligence we will actually link up with mca so all your corporate if your company you need not even fill that we will just directly with the apis take it up from there so 
we were trying to work out a seamless um, thing. It will take another, once I get these commercial, I'll go and get this approval, and then they will take six months time to develop it. Thank you so much. Ma'am, I will take the last question. Uh, just uh, some uh, important question has come. Uh, based on the reflection of wave two, for the mm -hmm. oxygen shortage, uh, what specific plans we have uh, to increase the oxygen availability in the state of Karnataka? Okay, so if we look at, uh, see, um, if we were allowed to use all the oxygen that is produced within Karnataka, we would not have got any, we would not have had any shortage. This is, I want to put it on record and tell you, because um, uh, we were producing around 1100 to 1200 metric ton of oxygen every day. A part of it, uh, in fact, uh, maximum oxygen that government of India allocated from within that two on the last uh, is around 800 metric ton from uh, within Karnataka. So we were getting from all over the um, all over India, especially from the eastern side of uh, the state uh, of the country. Now, uh, considering this, that all the steel plants and everything is taken over by the government of India. So what we are looking at is a twofold strategy, a rather threefold strategy. One is to incentivize setting up of more LMO plants within the state. So they are coming up. We are coming up with the uh, incentive package. It will be soon announced. So that is B. Second is again, we are trying to in all the government hospital to ensure government hospital till taluka level hospitals, they should have their own PSA plants. So they should be able to cater to certain minimum number of patients. So that is the second. Third is ensuring that there is a lot of uh, storage capacity. So we can build in buffer within each district. So storage capacity has to be augmented in each district where they do not have storage capacity. We have to create our storage capacity. So this is what we are trying to do when it comes to oxygen. Um, unfortunately, there was a Chamaraj Nagar incident that happened. But having said that, that was not so much of oxygen shortage as you know, the problem created because of where I need not speak there. But uh, we did not have casualty in Karnataka because of shortage of oxygen. But having said that, it is definitely true. If we get, if we would have got more oxygen, we could have created more oxygen beds. So more ICU we could have created and more oxygenated beds we would have created. Where all of you are now helping in, you are uh, many of the associations, companies have come out. You know, you have donated PSAs, you have donated uh, concentrators. Also, we have got number bed augmentations that has happened at various uh, places and various government hospital. We have, in fact, with the help of Boeing, has set up uh, at the KPCL plant. That is where oxygen is available in C2 from the KPCL uh, Power Corporation. They have the oxygen plant, but that is in the gaseous form. Either you can bottle it, uh, but for that you needed compressor and all that stuff. We have created the hospital, then you can just pipe it. So all the 100 beds that have been created are oxygenated bed. So things like that is happening and we are wanting, um, you know, more and more ideas from you. But uh, there is a policy, there is a strategy that has been worked out for oxygen shortage. Mama, thank you so much. In fact, uh, for uh, want of time, uh, probably further questions, definitely we will reach it to you. You can send them. Uh, yeah, I can send you written replies. Sure, ma'am. And thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, Based on the discussions we had, we are definitely uh, working and we'll work hand in hand with you. In fact, we are also working on an initiative to set up the Skill Academy uh, together with Karnataka Skill Development Corporation. The other mm -hmm. day, we had a good discussion with you also with Dr. Katri and the Honorable Minister. So mm -hmm. we seek your guidance and support to take this forward because BCIC has got a fantastic uh, connect of big companies like Volvo, Bosch, TVS, mm -hmm. Toyota, and even IBM, Wipro, and the other side, Infosys. So mm -hmm. we will definitely work on that, ma'am. And secondly, the IoT 4.0, we have a very active committee chaired by uh, Mr. Chandra Mowli, the mm -hmm. former uh, president of BCIC and former uh, managing director of Starag and Makino. So we have conducted more than 20 events this time. Uh, mm -hmm. We have uh, very good uh, uh, programs connecting on physical platforms with Schneider, Fonuk, BFW. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Jagannathan is also very active. So definitely uh, we will work with you. In fact, uh, we are also signing up a MOU with the PSA office 
the principal scientific advisor uh, together with indian institute of science we had mm -hmm. a meeting with dr sarna poti from the prime minister's office so that uh, scientific cluster also we are signing very shortly ma'am just for your information so definitely uh, that we are also creating a platform it can be leveraged so bcic is always with you and uh, please feel uh, whatever way we can support it is our great indiva and uh, with this uh, thank you so much and as a small token of our appreciation we have a small virtual ceremony we will reach it to your office a small moment of from our side uh, can we please play the video please thank you very much thank Once you again, so much I, thank you all for this uh, wonderful session thank you madam uh, gunjan ji for your valuable time and you brought this uh, industrial policy in a very simple perspective i think uh, like a big picture you were able to share it with us and definitely uh, we would love to uh, hear more from your team and uh, we will uh, work on that and definitely uh, we will uh, assure on behalf of bcic that uh, we will do everything possible to take karnataka to the global map in aligning our team of namma karnataka to get you to the future india so mm -hmm. finally we have a national anthem thank you so much thank you janagana mana adhinayaka jaya he bharat bhagya vidhata punjab sindh gujarat maratha dravida ंगा हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलधि तरंगा तव शुभ नाम जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे